Today we're going to talk about trees. Ganja never killed a man. Put a plant against his head. Light the light and now he's dead. Ganja, everybody, is a gift from God. No, not that type of tree. The, the one with God and shit. But if you want that type of tree, go watch my video about Japan and cannabis. And yes, I made the same joke as before. I'm making an effort. So if you have been watching some of my videos, it shouldn't be a surprise that we really don't know much of our own past. And this is really not a conspiracy, since the study of history has always been complicated due to lack of resources and historians' own personal biases. And I have my own biases, and my viewers deserve to know that. Now the history of Egypt is very interesting, since there is a lot of debate inside the world of archaeology in regards to it. According to the status quo, Egypt was founded 3000 BC, uh, making it only 5000 years old. However, evidence is surfacing uh, about the idea that Egypt is actually much older than we thought probably spanning since the end of the ice age. For example, the sphinx erosion is high, and it comes from above the structure, which means that it couldn't come from Nile River flooding. And it seems that the precipitation that caused this uh, were not long term but instead short term, which was only possible during the end of the glacial era 10,000 years ago. I suggest you guys to watch Joe Rogan's podcast episode with Graham Hancock and Rondon Carson, in which they talk with much detail about Egypt and other civilizations that seem to be older than we thought. It seems that human civilization goes way back than we assume. Now you will expect much more study into this type of information, but every time this is discussed, well... Do not do ad hominem arguments. Do not debate the matter. Listen, we listen. The matter is debated really and it's closed. It is debated closed. It's closed in Chicago by all Australian, by everyone. Then I don't want to hear anything. Exactly, I don't want to hear anything. Shame on you. No, please, don't say this word to me. Don't say this word to me. It's a shame on you, not on me. Yeah. So that was Sahih Hawass, an important archaeologist of Egypt and part of the archaeology at the status quo. It was a quote-unquote debate with Graham Hancock which didn't last more than 10 minutes. Now it is not rare that mainstream scholars of any discipline tend to reject theories that may go against their preconceived notions, the irony, especially if they have been working on any sort of theory for decades. But archaeology is an area that seems to be kidnapped by dogma and anti-fringe sentiment. And I am personally of the opinion that academic discipline should always be welcoming to theories as long as evidence is present, from age periods to the use of entheogens. And talking about entheogens, it seems that civilizations in the Middle East were not strange to psychedelics. As a matter of fact, it is likely that their culture was heavily involved with the use of one of the most powerful psychedelics known to man. DMT, and that is what we're going to talk about today. So a quick explanation. DMT is the mother of all substance, the cream of the cream, the bridge towards that which we cannot even imagine, and more importantly, my favorite meme. There is much to say about the drug itself, but I won't cover all of it, perhaps in another video. I will just say that the experience is far different from LSD and mushrooms. For while an average dose of LSD and mushrooms tend to bring more emphasis towards visual and auditory hallucinations, with mild disassociation, DMT just expels you from your own body and makes you encounter aliens and shit. And I mean alien-like creatures that are aware of you, like if they had a mind of their own. There is plenty of debate about the nature of this occurrence. I am personally of the opinion that this is either different dimensions or part of our collective unconscious, a concept by Carl Jung. Then again, what will be the difference? Bruh. Now there seems to have been many great civilizations and calls to use DMT as a psychedelic substance for their organization. The indigenous of South America, Judaism, pre-Muhammad Muslim, Freemasons, and more interestingly, the ancient Egyptians who used Acacia nilotica. And we need to focus on this plant. This plant is located all throughout the Eastern Hemisphere, from Africa to India, and it was even introduced to Australia, and it is known to contain DMT. Not only that, but we can observe how important this tree was among all these cultures, religions and cults throughout history. It's very likely 
that this plant was used for its DMT and had a strong effect on the spiritual movement along the Middle East and Africa. The example that calls most attention being Egypt. And we know this thanks to this beautiful symbol that can be found all around the Egyptian structures since ancient times. The Tree of Life. The Tree of Life was one of the most important symbols of ancient Egypt symbolizing knowledge of the divine plan or the equivalent to a map of destiny. And according to Egyptian mythology, eating the fruit of the sacred tree of life was a guarantee of eternal life, and it was stated how Osiris resides in this plant, a similar belief as that of Mother Ayahuasca. I always talk about Ayahuasca, I really need to make a video. Also, am I the only one that notices the similarity between this legend and the Adam and Eve one? Not only that, but if you have seen my first video about the Lucinian mysteries, you might notice a similarity between Egypt rituals and Greek practices. Osiris is the god of the underworld, who was revived by her wife Isis, while in their Greek counterpart, Persephone is the goddess of the underworld, who is rescued by her mother Demeter. We can definitely notice some sort of archetype about individuals who have been in contact with the underworld and explains why these stories are so similar. And not only this, but it is likely that this plant was also used by the Jewish people in the Middle East. As a matter of fact, the tree that set on fire in front of Moses was the Acacia Nilotica, mentioned it in Exodus 37 and 38. And the Acacia plant is useful for construction, so it won't be strange at all that buildings will be made from this plant. And according to Kaufman Kohler, an American rabbi scholar, the plant was heavily pregnant. I do wonder why. Probably due to the medicinal value that it had, but also probably because of the psychoactive properties of the plant. The last group that I want to mention, and the one that actually choked me the most, was Freemasonry. The Acacia is present as a symbol among this organization. And although there are different meanings for the plant, the most resounding meaning that it has is the immortality of the soul. So in summary, we really only have covered three cultures that use DMT. The ancient Egyptians, the Freemasons, and the Jews. But there are many more cultures throughout history that have used this substance for ceremonious reasons. And I will cover all of it in future videos. I hope that you have enjoyed my video and you may learn something new today. And for more videos, please consider subscribing. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!